Well, it's kind of warm in here. I guess I'm not going to need this. Always be prepared, though, especially when you go north. Okay. Borealis was a north wind to the Greeks. Aurora was the goddess of dawn, the bringer of light in Roman mythology. The Vikings supposedly called him. Uh, I, I can't pronounce. Or maybe it was Pechacucha. I, I can't pronounce either one of them. There are hundreds of stories of worship. Fear, omen, the ancient Norsemen thought the Aurora Borealis was a reflection from the polished shields carried by Valkyries headed for Valhalla. I never saw those girls, probably mythical, so use your imagination. But I saw those lights, bewitched. After the US Air Force service, I found a Valkyrie, found not a Valkyrie, but a beautiful dark-haired dark half-Viking lady. We drove into Canada in a blonde Packard convertible. One night, driving with the top down, we saw those lights. My bride became a member of the Aurora Borealis Admiration Society. Her father worked on the Alcan Road in 1943. Cold, permafrost, and mosquitoes. He wanted to go back. In 1964, we headed north in a second-hand VW. Dawson City was almost a ghost town. One motel and a one-pump gas station. Open a few hours, most days. North again. I covered snowmobile races from Anchorage to Fairbanks, races out of Talkeetna. Talkeetna again was for a story about Evil Alice, the sourdough cooking legend. Alice could make anything for a starter. She cooked, I photographed and ate for almost a week. She could even make donuts. <laughs> Off to Lapland to do a story on the socioeconomic effects of the snowmobile on the reindeer laps. We spent weeks with the herders, sleeping under piles of reindeer hides in wooden huts, and attended a lap wedding, my first of many crossings of the Arctic Circle. This led to a similar project in Barrow, Alaska. The tribal leader invited me on the spring whale hunt. The open water is 20 miles offshore. He gave me a Pulaski to work on a full day of carving a trail through the huge ice ridges to set up camp on the, on the, on the ice shelf. The next morning, they launched the Umiak, the skin boat. After several hours of quiet paddling, the Inuit hunters struck a 60-ton bowhead, then tied, it to an out, tied the, the whale to an outboard uh, to the Umiak with an old, old outboard and towed the whale back to the camp. I had my first and last attempt at eating muktuk. That's whale blubber. Cancer took my, wife in, my, my Viking wife to Valhalla, but I found another dark-haired Viking who also loved to travel. We decided to drive to Prudhoe Bay, the most northerly road in North America, but the oil companies had it shut down. So we went to Anuvik and flew to Tuktoyaktuk. In two later years, I had got, got assignments on icebreaker ships. The most challenging was photographing the icebreaking while standing on the ice. What could happen if the ice broke under me? Well, the Coast Guard diver standing next to me would pull me out, unless the crack closed and left me underneath or squashed like a bug. And we got to Prudhoe two and a half times. Would have been three, but a wrecked tanker blocked the haul road south of Coldfoot one winter. Wrecks are very common closures up there on the Dalton to Prudhoe and on the Dempster to Anuvik. One assignment to Iceland. Two trips to Newfoundland, the second one adding Labrador. Goose Bay was only accessible by air or water, but while working on a habitat project in St. John's, we heard of a road being built. Another ferry voyage past icebergs. Three days later, we were in Quebec and more northern lights. 17 years ago, we first entered the Alcan 5000, a 10-day, 5,000-mile road rally, starting in Seattle and ending in Anchorage, with checkpoints including Dawson City, Yellowknife, and Anuvik. That 500 mile road from Dawson City ends there. It's off the screen. <clears throat> from Anuvik, we drive 125 miles north on the frozen Mackenzie to Tuktoyaktuk. We no longer run to Prudhoe. The increased oil traffic up there may, makes it too dangerous. We may be crazy, but we're not stupid. Teams come from North America and Europe, 
rally veterans, hobby racers, men and women. Time, speed, distance. Drive a stage according to your route book, 4.5 miles at 52 miles per hour, 2.2 at 46, etc. Time by marshals clocking us. Seconds early or late mean penalty points. We can run with fancy rally computers or with only a stopwatch, speedometer, and odometer. Then there are the ice races on a one or two mile Grand Prix course plowed out at a frozen lake or river. Snowbag encounters are, in co are common. Staff, me staff members tow out the victims. Damage is usually limited to bent air dams, plastic grills, rally lights, and egos. <clears throat> Transits are long runs of several hundred miles, timed only by start and finish times. Not a speed event, but designed to test vehicle reliability, driver skills, and judgment. There's time to refuel, grab coffee and road munchies. Bad weather is always a challenge. Good weather means a rapid scenic drive. The 10 days of competition are challenging, but we always look forward to the drive back from Anchorage, taking time to enjoy the beauty of the North Country. Sometimes we take the Alaska ferries back for a different but equally quality experience. Either way, we sometimes see those Northern Lights again. We have run every Alcan 5000 since 1996. There are route and TSD changes each time. 2012 featured record snows, icy roads, blizzards, one wreck and one rollover, three breakdowns and many off-road excursions, excursions, but no injuries. Best winter rally ever. <laughs> so here I am, still bewitched by Aurora Borealis and by a dark-haired half biking, perhaps it's the sparkling reflections of those polished shields. And per perhaps that is why a compass, a compass points north. I know ours does. <laughs> Robert Service said it true. There's a land where the mountains are nameless and the rivers all run God knows where. There's a land Oh, it beckons and beckons, and I want to go back, and I will. <laughs>